I don't give a about your kids. As much as we love the in-ring action on WWE TV, the wrestlers who elevate to legendary status always have a solid promo game. The likes of Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock are remembered more for what they said rather than for their matches. And then there's this lot, who are often the exact opposite. Here are the WWE wrestlers with the worst mic skills, starting with Brock Lesnar. I'm the beast! and the best in the world. Nowadays, Brock is actually pretty interesting on the mic, but back when he debuted in 2002, oh my, none of us were ready for that. The first time we heard him speak was during a backstage segment where he yelled at Paul Heyman, then told his opponent he was gonna show him the meaning of ruthless aggression. That's all well and good, but none of us were expecting Brock to have such a high-pitched voice. We'd seen the monster of a man jacked to the gills and dominating wrestlers for weeks at this point, and everyone just expected him to have a much rougher, gruffer voice. But instead, we got this. Ronda Rousey. The only door you ever knocked down was the door to John Cena's bedroom. I gotta give Ronda a little bit of leeway here because as a UFC fan, there's one thing I've known all along. Ronda Rousey is a real life villain. She's a heel. She's the bad guy. For years in MMA, she would say brash, overly confident things and be rude and confrontational to her opponents. That said, she also dominated the field and fans of the sport couldn't help but sing her praises. When she came to the WWE, wrestling fans knew she was a badass and initially cheered her. But Ronda was told to play a good guy, something that absolutely does not come naturally to her. And boy, oh boy, did she bomb. The only time we got to see some greatness from Ronda on the mic was when she was finally given permission to turn heel and just turned into herself and ripped the fans apart. That's all I have to say. That's who she actually is, and that's who she should have been portraying all along. I will not hesitate to rip your arm out of its socket. Chris Benoit. I believe in me. I look at me. I believe in me. Cards on the table. I love Chris Benoit. He had an amazing match every single time I saw him, and that's all I can really ask because I didn't know him personally outside of my TV set. But man, was he robotic on the mic. You can't just stand back and let you have all the fun tonight. Debuting for WWE in 2000 during the height of the Attitude Era, big flashy characters and strong promos were the name of the game. Benoit could hang in the ring with anyone in the business, but on the mic? Oh dear. He was flat, unenthusiastic, and always sounded like he was forcing any emotion that he had. Those suplexes, though. Match, but try to humiliate your opponent! He got him! Can he do it again? You're falling down that mountain. Mike Adamley. Anticipation, his name is Jeff Harvey. Hardy. In fact... What was this guy? Look, apparently he's a really nice guy in real life and a fairly accomplished individual as well. None of that matters to me as a WWE fan, though, because listening to Adam Lee mispronounce famous WWE wrestlers' names on WWE shows was just brutal. Not just that, but he would stumble through your average sentence and make mistakes you wouldn't think were possible. How did WWE handle this? By making him Raw's general manager, of course. This was right on the cusp of WWE turning PG, so it was like they wanted to get a head start on ruining their own product. I'll never understand what they were thinking with this one. I mean, really. Scott Steiner. Big pop a pop! It's your hookup! Holler! In the air back! Ha! What? Rah! Scott Steiner might be the weirdest entry on this list. He wasn't bad in the traditionally bad Mike Adamley way. He wasn't boring like Chris Benoit or Rey Mysterio. He was just, well, a bit annoying, really. Everything that Scott Steiner said, he did with a high-pitched voice and generally just talked about how jacked he was and spat out some meaningless catchphrases. Big Papa Pump is your hookup. What? What are you talking about? What are you hooking up? Bad matches because your body's so broken down and you refuse to do some yoga because it's for wimps? Holla! If you hear me! Good lord, man. All we can do is hear you, and you're not saying anything. Rumble, I'm gonna embarrass you and take your world title! Tommy Dreamer. I am normal and there's nothing wrong with me. 
Let's clarify something here. I'm talking about Tommy Dreamer in the WWE, not Tommy Dreamer in ECW. In ECW, when wrestlers didn't have to worry about corporate nonsense, Dreamer was allowed to be himself and to shine. But I got to see him in 2002 and onwards WWE, and let me tell you, I did not get Tommy Dreamer. He was below average in the ring, and his character was... what? What was he? A wrestler bad at wrestling? So why is he on my TV? They tried to make him interesting in 2002 by having him drink The Undertaker's chewing tobacco out of his spit cup, and yeah, I don't think he ever really recovered from that. Until one night stand in 2005, that is. Hardcore Holly. It doesn't matter to me, Michael Cole, because I will break your ass in half, you little Boring. Remember when Stone Cold Steve Austin came out during a Lance Storm match and shouted BORING into the mic? That's what went on in my head every time Hardcore Holly said anything. BORING! God, what a bland character this was. What was he even? He's hardcore? Okay, great. So is Mankind, who also had an amazing character to go along with it. He could run the generic face or the generic heel game pretty strongly, filling in roles wherever WWE needed him. But man, oh man, there's a reason he was never even given a mid-card WWE title run. Unless you count the tag titles, but WWE doesn't even really count the tag titles. Rhino. Enough! You show this woman some respect! This one hurts me because I think Rhino was really cool. He had a great look as a stocky powerhouse, and his finisher, the Gore, is one of the most exciting of all time. For a while there, it almost looked like he was destined for greatness, but he never really got there. You want to know why? I'll give you one guess. Yep, his promos were brutal. He was an absolute dud on the mic. We never really focused on it too much because he had great matches, and like I said, the Gore was a thing of beauty. But on the rare occasion Rhino got on the mic, hard to decide between awkward and boring. Steve Blackman. This way this thing's got to end. One way or not! Oh man, Steve Blackman went from being mysterious to boring really fast. He's a legitimately tough guy having apparently starched Bradshaw in a backstage altercation. His portrayal of a martial arts warrior was cool at first and fans were excited to see where it could go. Then he spoke a few times and oh my god, you couldn't change the channel fast enough. He had potentially the flattest voice of any wrestler ever and not just that, he didn't really have anything interesting to say. Management clearly saw something in his physique in his death stare as they had him have a high profile match against Shane McMahon at SummerSlam 2000. When they asked him how it went, Blackman told them, and legend has it, Gerald Briscoe still hasn't woken back up. Rey Mysterio. Yo, don't sweat Kurt. I got Kurt Angle tonight. The Mysterio in his name, meaning mystery, I know, shocker of all shockers, had a lot to do with Ray not saying much. When he first debuted in WWE, he had his iconic mask, cool contact lenses, and amazing moves that WWE fans hadn't seen before. Everything about Ray was cool to look at, but they didn't keep him silent for no reason. Ray just never really had an it when he spoke. He wasn't horrible, he was just severely plain. It was a stark difference from everything else about him, so it wasn't for another couple of years before we started hearing more and more from him. That concludes our list of the WWE wrestlers with the worst mic skills. Which ones did we miss? Let us know in the comments below.